Turn with me to our gospel reading for the evening, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. I realize the bulletin says 20, but preacher's prerogative, I'm taking you a little longer tonight. As we enter the text, it is a text that most of you, I am sure, are familiar with. But I do want to go ahead and preface it by saying this is actually not, as we notice by the numbers, the beginning of Luke's gospel. Uh, He begins his gospel by stating his purpose to write an orderly account so that you may have certainty in what you have been taught. He begins by placing it at the level of the government to locate it into a particular place in time. He then brings us to the characters of the story, and then he brings God's revelation. He did it with John and John's birth. He does it with Jesus. So as we read the text tonight, I invite you to hear these three levels of the story. Let us now listen to and for the word of God. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because There was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. This is the word of the Lord. So in 1965, perhaps the best sermon ever preached was offered by Linus Van Pelt. Some of you are grinning, you know the name, some of you are lost already, so let me share with you that sermon in its entirety after the reading of this text. That's what Christmas is about. The end. It's from a Charlie Brown Christmas. For those of you lost on the translation, Charles Schultz did what preachers across the world struggle to do every Christmas Eve. He put it succinctly in a way that will bring a smile to your face, the true joy into your heart, and the reality of the birth of Jesus solidly in a way that we can understand it. You see, too often from behind the pulpit, we want to bring out a theological nuance. We want to find some subtle way to bring a new angle to the story. This isn't a text for angles. 
This is a text for truth. To have a right understanding of what we have been taught. And so as Luke gives us this passage, I invite you to consider the three elements that I've tried to prompt you with before we began. The first being the placement of this within the Roman world. Caesar Augustus, Governor Quirinius. And the angels spoke to neither of them. Mary and Joseph, controlled by the government, controlled in a way that brings them to a place that fulfills prophecy, but the angels didn't speak to them either. Oh sure, they had spoken to both Mary and Joseph well before this event, but on the night of her birth, when she's in the agonizing pain of childbearing, And I can tell you that I understand that from an observer's perspective. It's not pleasant. But there were no angels singing to Mary that night. The angels were off talking to the shepherds. Now, we don't do a lot with shepherds in the world today. So I want to take a moment and just explore Where are the shepherds' ranks in the world in which Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the world? They were the nobodies. You see, we always talk about how the Bible speaks against the power of the government, but we, we kind of read right over the part where this also speaks against the power of the church. It's a very countercultural message to say if we really want to experience Christmas Eve the way it was originally experienced, we shouldn't be in a sanctuary. We should be out in a field somewhere, going about our third shift, underpaid, underappreciated job, just going through the drudgery of the day. Because you see, it wasn't just the government that had given up on the status of the shepherds. It was the religious establishment as well. These were the unclean. Their job with the sheep made them perpetually ritually unclean, so they weren't even welcome into the temple. They weren't allowed to come bring their sacrifices if they were still working. Why bring that up? Because the good news of the gospel, the joy of Jesus the Christ, born to you this day, is for everyone. I know in the reality of my life, there are family members that wouldn't feel welcome in a church. There are friends who wouldn't darken the doors of a church, even on Christmas Eve. You perhaps have some of those folks in your sphere of influence too. And what I hope you hear out of tonight's reading of the passage is Jesus came for them just as much as he came for you. When the shepherds heard what the angels said, the shepherds were the ones to bring that news to Mary and Joseph. The shepherds were the ones proclaiming what Mary treasured in her hearts. The news of the angels is yours to share, be it with the shepherds, the outcasts, those who have perhaps even given up on God. Because ultimately that's the good news of Jesus the Christ, is even if we've given up on God, God hasn't given up on us. There's one more piece I want to share with you tonight, and it's about the phrase Merry Christmas. Some of you may remember this from last year, although it was the 11 p.m. service that I shared this, so I'm not sure any of you were really still awake at that point. If I hadn't had my notes to look back on, I'm not sure I would have remembered it. But when we think about the phrase Merry Christmas, and you may recall last year this was all the big uproar. Do you say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy whatever? Um... I wanted to do a little word study on that. Merry Christmas is, of course, broken down into three parts. Merry, Christ, and Mass. 
I'll start at the back and work my way, work my way backwards. Mass is our, from our pre-Reformation days, and it was the Eucharist. It was the service of remembrance of the death and resurrection of Jesus. So when we say Christ Mass, it is the Mass remembering the death, the resurrection of the Christ, Christos, the word for Messiah, the title that we have assigned to Jesus. Mary, of course, well, that one's easy. That's to be joyful or with mirth. So we are happily remembering the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Not exactly the right bling for a Hallmark card, but the solid theology of the evening. And so with the reading of Luke, with the hearing of the gospel, as we prepare our hearts for communion, I bid you all Merry Christmas.